Alright, so welcome back to our YouTube channel. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe if you're new. And let's get straight into today's video because in today's video we're going to be updating our tier list. This will be the last tier list obviously for the end of the year and going into next year. Highly request a video over the last week or so. So we're going to be adding the three newest characters. It has been quite a long time since we did update our tier list. I believe since September. Um, so we do have the new Yonko Buggy. We do have Zoro Ashura. And we do have the very new uh, Nami Zeus. Or Zeus Nami. Now the first thing you guys can probably notice. Is we've changed the tiering for the tier list on the side. Because it was getting a bit confusing to some people. Uh, with don't invest in the must have characters. So we're just keeping it as a generalized tier list. Uh, so that it's very easy for everyone to understand where these characters are. Now the second thing is. I'm not sure if I went over the combo card characters. I have added them onto the list. I don't believe we've added them on the list before this video. Um, so obviously SAL with getting potential levels. is actually really really good now. Uh, one of the top tier characters you need to serve at Summit War. You can even run him on your main team now in Arena, but previously beforehand he wasn't that great because he didn't have potential levels, but with potential levels, as I said, uh, these combo card characters will be a lot better in the current meta. Unfortunately, he's the only combo card character that actually has potential levels, so the other three aren't that great. A CP9 will never be great, they'll always be D tier, but the three emeralds can actually be pretty good if they just get their potential levels. And I'm not sure about the three top gorgeouses because you have to run them with Monkey King, Luffy, and, and Mazori, and they're just not two good characters in the game. So I'm not sure if they'll ever be good. They do have potential levels on Naruto and, and DBZ. However, I'm not sure if that'll actually increase the character's viability. So that's how the combo card characters are. Another thing you might see is Sanji Jama has been put down. Some of these older characters are going to start falling down in the tier list because there are so much stronger characters in the game now. Like Sanji Jema, Luffy Taro is way better than him, Marco is way better, Nicky Luffy obviously way better than him. Like there are just better options in the game than what they used to be. Uh, Nami Valentine's Day, I'll keep her in SS tier but she's going to start falling as well. Um, she's probably in between S and SS tier. But I'll keep her in SSC for now. Going into next year, she'll probably start falling down the tier list just like Sanji Jerma because there are just better characters in the game. Uh, one thing we do have to move down, unfortunately, is Surgeon of Death Lore. This guy, unfortunately, has been bugged for about the last three to four months in the game. He doesn't ult when he revives. Uh, his passive, part of his passive is also bugged. So we have to move this guy down one tier. Unfortunately, he... He's just so unplayable. If you've noticed in Ninja Server some War, some of the top players like Neituru, Yujiro, Hanma, none of them run Lore. Because if you go second, no matter what game mode it is, whether it be Arena, Ninja Server Summit War, if you go second, it's basically a 5v6 with him on your team. Because he gets one shot turn one, and then he revives and does basically nothing. He just uses his basic skill and that's it. He's pretty much useless. So, he should be much further down in the tier list, honestly. He should probably... He should probably be, like, B tier or even A tier. He's really not that great. We'll keep him at SD because he is a really good character. And once they finally fix his bugs, if they will ever fix his bugs, uh, he'll go back up to SS tier. Another example of bugs in the game, uh, MDD or Monkey D Dragon has been bugged permanently. This is why I'm saying I'm not sure if Law's ever going to get fixed because MDD has been permanently bugged since release. And he released pretty much a year and a half ago and he's still permanently bugged in the game. So we have to move Law down unfortunately. So this is the tier list at the moment. So now we're going to be adding the three newest characters to the tier list. And the first character or the oldest character that we didn't add to the tier list was Buggy. Now Buggy, when he came out, a very hype character. A lot of people love Buggy in the anime. Um, unfortunately, they really did him dirty, the devs. They ruined his passive, his potential to passive, and made it so you have to run him on Nicky Luffy team. And you not only have to run him on Nicky Luffy team, but you actually have to face a Nicky Luffy team as well 
to get the bonuses on his potential to passive. Which makes him quite bad and a very niche character because you can only run him on one team against one team. So unlike the Naruto and Dragon Ball Z version, he would be top tier if they just didn't ruin his passive. So unfortunately he's going to be S tier. Now the reason why we're putting him S tier and not like A or B because he should actually be lower is because potential 6. If you can max this guy out to potential 6, he's a big whale character. Don't get me wrong, but if you can get him to potential 6, anti-revive is so broken. So broken in the game. Uh, but we're going to leave my S tier. He should honestly be A or B tier. Probably A tier if he's not potential 6. If you only have him 4 star, 5 star, potential 2, even potential 2, it's so bad. If you don't have Nick or Luffy, there's no point in even having the character. Um, he's really good for uh, PvE. A guild boss and world boss he is top tier in that respect but in pvp he's not that great unless you have him potential six so potential six whale character or just don't run him at all now last month's character zoro ashura unfortunately he was on the worst event in the entire game the blessing event which let's be honest is not a blessing at all so not many people have this guy in the game he is probably one of the best, if not the best character at 6 stars in the entire game because Sea Kings is so unbelievably broken late game. Much needed character. They really should have put him on GP event uh, so everyone can actually enjoy the game rather than getting one shot by Sea Kings uh, end game. If you have him 4 or 5 star, he's probably SS tier. Um, you really, really want his 6 star passive. So you get the 20% damage cap and you get the 80% damage reduction on Seeking attacks. Your team takes 80% less damage from Seekings. Um, if you have him 6 star, he is like triple S. We'll leave him at triple S. But if he's only 4 or 5 star, he's definitely 1 below. Um, because you really need him at 6 star to be at his max potential. He's just so good at 6 star. Um, so we'll keep him at triple S. But if you don't have him 6 star, as I said, he's just double S. And then the last character, the newest character added to the game this month is Zeus Nami. Now Zeus Nami, absolutely amazing character. Triple SS tier, doesn't even need to be 6 star like Zori Ashra. She's just like Nick Luffy. Absolutely amazing at 4 or 5 star. Obviously 5 star potential too is what you'd want minimum. But she's absolutely amazing. Definitely going to be a top tier character in Interserve at Summit of War. And you can run her on arena teams as well. She's just absolutely amazing. Alright, so this will end up being our tier list for the end of the year going into next year. I really hope you guys enjoyed our update of the tier list video. I really hope it was very helpful to you guys. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.